Okay, so today I will be talking about cultural perception. So my thesis is, culture affects how one perceives the world due to cultural differences. So to begin with, you must understand what culture is. So culture refers to the ideas and beliefs that give someone a sense of shared history and it guides our behavior. And culture can be manifested in things such as language, norms, morals, um, and so on. We also have to understand perception and the perception process. So perception relates to the, I, the set of unconscious processes which allows us to make sense of stimulus. And it's known um, to be a three-step process. So the first step is selection, where we choose what stimulus we want to attend to based on our environment and based on the individual. And it's also influenced by long-term and short-term motivations. The second step is organization. So once we have chosen which stimulus to attend to, um, we take the information and organize it to create patterns that we can understand. And then the last step is interpretation, where we interpret and make sense of that stimulus, and that can be greatly influenced by cultural values, experience, and expectations. Um, so cultural values uh, make up culture, and today I wanted to talk about two more general cultural values that allows us to understand how culture really affects perception. So um, with that, we have individualism, which is a value where people um, focus on individuality and focus on the needs of the individual. Everything is about the individual. But the problem with this is that they struggle to comprehend um, the point of view of other cultures and cultural differences. So they're less likely to open up to those cultural differences. And next, we have cultural um, collectivism which is the opposite, where it emphasizes um, cooperation and everything is working in group, um, forming relations with others, and because this has to do with creating relations, they're more open to uh, cultural differences and they're more receptive of how people perceive the world. Now, cultural differences um, help us understand how people interact with the world, and during my research, uh, the two most the two main examples were the Western culture and the East Asian culture. So the difference is, is that the East Asian culture, this is a culture that greatly values collectivism, which as I said, is um, focused on working with groups and forming relations. They also have inflexible beliefs, meaning they're unwilling to challenge their old traditions, they stick to their um, old traditions. And then the behaviors are driven by situational, situational factors and context. Um, and because they, value collectivism, they perceive the world um, through the concept of interconnectedness. They think everything is interconnected. On the other hand, we have Western cultures which value individualism, um, and they believe that a person has makes their own choices and is responsible for their own choices, and their behavior is dictated by attitude and preference. And these are some examples of how these two different cultures perceive different things, such as eating habit, opinions, and relations. Um, so along with values, language is also part of culture and language allows us to share our perceptual experiences with others and due to all the different um, languages in the world, there's a variety of uh, perceptual experiences. So um, according to a guy named, guy named Benjamin Ward, he came up with the theory that language shapes our reality and language drives how we think. And he found this out through research where he studied the Anglo-American culture and the Hopi culture. And he found out that the Anglo-American culture perceived the world to be as a set of things. And then the Hopi culture perceived the world to be a collection of actions. And due to his conclusions today, um, we believe that language drives our thought and it can affect how one perceives time, space, and color. So looking at time, so every culture has their own perception of time. And some examples are how the English have a horizontal metaphor of time, meaning they look at time linearly. And then the Chinese have a vertical metaphor of time, meaning they look at it using words such as up and down, and so on. Um, when you look at space, um, words and languages can affect our degree of orientation. So some, language, some cultures use left and right to refer to objects, and some cultures use north, west, and south, and so on. And then we have perception of color, which in a study they took Russian, Russian culture people and then English people and they had them observe a color blue and the Russians were able to distinguish between the light and dark blue and then the English were able just to distinguish it as blue. Okay, 
Then we have sensory perception. So um, in a study, they, um, they had American children and Chinese, um, Chinese children where they gave them an animated scene. And um, from the study, it resulted that Western cultures have a more active brain in object processing, while East Asian cultures have a more active brain in background processing. So that leads to the conclusion that um, Western cultures have a more analytical view of the world, meaning they focus on logic on, and on the main subject and East Asian cultures have a more holistic view of the world, meaning they focus more on the context and the experiences and relations they form. And then additional concepts I wanted to talk about was ethnocentrism. So ethnocentrism is the concept where a culture feels superior to the rest and so they evaluate other cultures using their own cultural values and they believe that their culture is correct in every way. And some negative effects of this is that it can limit ability to communicate, but it can also lead to misinterpretations. So seen in the Muslim Woman article, we see how the Western culture is ethnocentric, and they believe that there's an issue in the Muslim culture, but and that the woman needs saving, but in reality, it's not a real issue. And they also make misinterpretations about how women are forced to wear burqas, but for them, they perceive it as a choice. And then in contrast to this, there's cultural relativism, which is just taking a culture and evaluating it on its own terms, actually trying to understand their point of view and their perception of the world. So all in all, cultural differences um, allow us to perceive the world, but it, um, it also causes conflicts on what is right and what is wrong. So in response to this, a solution could be that individuals should try to understand different cultures and how they function. Um, and try to see their point of view, but of course limitations to this would be the concept of ethnocentrism and how perception has bias. Okay, so I have a couple questions for you. Um, so, what might the real world implications um, be um, on your, of your findings and what are the implications to your own community? Can you rephrase? Sure. Um, so what might be some real implications, real world implications or consequences? Um, so for example, some influence on others' behaviors or decision makings based on your findings or your solution. And what are the implications to your, your own community? So what would be, what, how would that look in your own world? How? So like what consequences do Mm -hmm. Well, I talked about um, cultural differences, so uh, the consequences that cultural differences bring is that we each, uh, within our cultures, we kind of think that our own values are correct, so um, when it comes to like uh, evaluating other cultures, we don't really like consider their point of view. Okay. Um, the next question I have is... Um, how valid and reliable are your sources that you use, and how do you know which ones didn't work out? Okay, so my sources, I think most of them were pretty reliable, but I did come across some sources that weren't really reliable because throughout my research, a lot of the sources were blogs, which don't really have a lot of reliable sources, but the sources that I did use um, involved a lot of evidence where they um, quoted of researchers and people that actually had were experts in the field, and um, yeah, I used a lot of sources that um, related to the studies that were conducted. Okay, thank you.